back to Free Media. I'm Ravi Suave. And I'm Batya Unger Sargon. Moving right along, the White House press corps is losing patience with Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre. Frustrated reporters demanded answers to basic questions about Biden's interactions with neurologists. Let's watch Jean-Pierre's response. We cannot share names of specialists broadly, it, from a dermatologist to a neurologist. We cannot share names. There are security reasons. We have to, we have to protect. Uh, I understand I that. I, un I, I hear it's you. It's right I, there for anyone to see. Ed, I hear you. I cannot from here confirm any of that because we have to keep their privacy. I think they would appreciate that too. We have oh, to give them. Question the doctor. We have to keep their privacy. It is public. It is public. public I, I, I it hear is you. I have to allow this guys, to fester guys, longer, Karine, guys, unless the White House guys, answers the hold question. Hold on a second. There's no reason to get back and go back and forth and well, be in this we aggressive are way. We missed around here about how information's been shared with the press corps around here. What do you missed about? Oh, what do you missed about? Everything he just asked about. Well, what do you think about that, Bacha? Um, I think that she's doing an incredible job, given the fact that for four years, <laughs> she's had the most sycophantic <laughs> press who have oh. themselves like been shutting down Peter Ducey or trying to shame anybody in the room for asking difficult questions, right? They were all doing her job for her. It was the most easy job and suddenly, on a dime, she's facing the press that used to face the Trump press secretary, right? And I think she's doing a very good job, and I think it is just so disgusting because they are miffed at her that they were not doing their jobs for four years out of what you called ideological yeah. simpaticoness with the Biden administration. This whole scene, may, I don't know, I don't see it. Everybody's obviously like, you know, going off on her for not wanting to reveal this information. Her job is to go out there and basically say, we're not divulging that information. And I think that in a very aggressive room, in a very aggressive situation, which is again, a shock for her, right? I think she held it together mm. very nicely. I think it's always weird <laughs> to judge the performance of the press secretary whose job essentially is to mislead totally. the press. And like, what is it, if I say, oh yeah, they're doing a really good job, <laughs> that's actually like an indictment sort of of their level of integrity and honesty. Um, I don't think she's as effective in that role as Jen Psaki was. Maybe that's just like personal um, preference or something in, in their style. Um, you're right that she hasn't faced very much hostility on this question until now. Now she's getting, um, you know, what the Trump people got all along. Uh, she's in a impossible situation of trying to, you know, she can't pretend the decline is not happening because we all saw it. Um, now, I, I don't know what specific, you're right, if I was a doctor called in to visit with Biden under a kind of patient uh, confident, doctor confidentiality thing, and then the White House press secretary, uh, secretary gave, um, I don't know, the Daily Beast my email address or my contact information, I'd probably be pretty upset about it. So I, I don't think that she should be sharing the private information of the doctors, but we should get broader questions about what these kinds of meetings entail. We, we should get answers about what these kinds of meetings entailed. I saw it reported as well from, uh, I believe, the New York Post and the New York Times that uh, a Parkinson specialist had met, uh, had, had been on the White House visitor logs eight times since last summer through spring. That, that's, I mean, that's incredible that we don't know more about that. And, and maybe to your point, it's, it's not that we should be so angry at the press secretary of the White House for, for um, keeping that from us, although I, I think I am still angry about that. Um, we should be more, but we should be indicting a media class that um, was not curious enough to get the answers I mean, to those weren't questions. those records as public as they were happening through the last eight months as they were last week when they got exactly now. that is on them. I, and I, the I, way I. you report that is you ask her, are you going to give us this information? She says no, and you make that the headline. Where they, you know, White yeah. White House refuses to divulge this information. This kabuki theater is just so gross to me because again, it's exposing. They have taken their incompetence, they have yeah. taken them, their perfidy, their refusal to do their jobs out of ideological and class solidarity with the Democratic Party, and they are now to disguise that acting outrage. I mean, it's the oldest trick in the book, right? You know you've done something to your husband, and so you get angry first because you know <laughs> that, 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 you know, that hammer is coming down on you, and you want the first oh. person to get angry is going to win, right? I didn't know about that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, I, I find it so yeah 
distasteful and there's a real reckoning coming. I mean, we always say this, it never comes, but you know, the, the, in a way, I'm really glad this is happening because you see how conservatives are, are reacting to it. You know, w welcome to our world, right? Like welcome to what it's like to be treated like this all the time. Can you imagine if somehow Biden remains the nominee, which I expect that he will remain the nominee, and then some, something happens, he somehow wins the election. I don't know, there could be some big, I can't imagine the Trump scandal at this point that would like shake uh, his loyal fans, but you know, we could imagine something happening. Biden somehow wins. The relationship that Karine Jean-Pierre or whoever does that job next is gonna have with the press corps for the next yeah. four years is gonna be, that's gonna be a toxic room. I'm not gonna wanna sit in that room. Honestly, I, if he wins, they're gonna go back to adoring him. You think so? Because I think they only care about beating Trump. Mm. They don't care anything about his ability to govern or to rule. They only care about whether he can beat well, Trump. Well, by the same extent, if, if Trump is no longer, in their view, a threat, maybe that frees them up to actually, I don't know, do their jobs and try to, like, from a business standpoint, actually get scoops, because there is, you know, there's huge hunger. I can tell it from um, uh, the number of videos, you know, I've done on this subject now, both for Reason and for Rising. Um, people are really um, into this subject because they're concerned, because they, they saw what they saw in the debate. They had this concern already. People want reporting, not just commentary, but people that want actual report. They want facts. They want to make an informed decision in November, and they want to be, you know, making an informed decision as to the extent they can't even if he somehow got a second term over the course of it, um, I, I would think there would be incentive, there is incentive, because you can't pretend it's not there now. So I, right. I'm hoping there's gonna be incentive, even for people who are otherwise ideologically on board with Biden, as, as you said, most of the media is, um, to do some actual reporting. Well, maybe we, we at Reason and Newsweek and The Hill will try to do that reporting, even if no one else is, I guess. Uh, more free media right after this.